More than 20 years ago, back in 1999, we discovered an interesting diamond-shaped space rock. It was an asteroid called Ryugu. Its name is the Japanese term for Dragon Palace. There's a Japanese folktale behind that name. Basically, it's about a magical palace hidden deep underwater. In this story, there's a fisherman who visits the castle traveling on the back of a turtle. He returns back to the surface with a mysterious box. About two years ago, a similar thing happened in reality when the Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2 visited Ryugu and came back with mysterious samples it picked up there. And the fairy tale doesn't just stop there. There are so many craters and rocks on Ryugu, so it probably had quite a rough past. And the craters all share a theme. They're named after something from the world of fairy tales. For example, the name of the princess who lived in this magical Ryugu castle, together with her dad, a dragon deity. Some got names after the fisherman who saved a turtle, and the turtle itself, of course. But back to the science now. So this spacecraft took a sample from the surface of Ryugu, got back to Earth, and teams of researchers discovered something really cool. The asteroid is even older than our solar system. The spacecraft took the sample to help researchers to understand the origins of our solar system better. But this is not the first time scientists came across such ancient grains. They previously found them in multiple meteorites. Meteorites are generally space rocks that survived the fall through the atmosphere to land on Earth. They're usually rich in carbon, just like the asteroid Ryugu. But the material on Ryugu is even more specific and something you can't stumble upon on our planet. Silicon carbide, a combination of pure silicon and pure carbon. The material Ryugu is made of is so unusual, it even tells us the asteroid was formed in the outer solar system. It's one of the three asteroids that are orbiting the Sun, but are moving relatively close to Earth. Each of them is just a loose pile of rubble, and their collective gravity is something that holds them together. They probably formed after their parent bodies collided and shattered into smaller pieces. Ryugu's individual rocks are probably 4.6 billion years old, or even more. So, it's most likely made up of material from its parent body. But some theories claim its surface could be 158 million years old. Ryugu sneaked into the inner part of our solar system, so we got a better chance to study it a little bit. It's circling around the Sun somewhere between our home planet and Mars. It crosses Earth's orbit from time to time, which is why it ended up in a category of potentially dangerous things for us, even though it's peaceful at the moment and it really doesn't harm us in any way. It's one of the darkest space bodies in our solar system, and it's surprisingly dry. Strange, its parent body probably consists of lots of water ice. Maybe Ryugu is dry because it has flown too close to the sun sometime in the past. That heated up its surface and dried it out. Or some of its radioactive materials heated the asteroid and removed most of its water. How do we even know how old our solar system is? Once upon a time, which is billions of years ago, in some far away, almost forgotten corner of the Milky Way, there was a molecular cloud. It fell apart and collapsed like many others across the universe did. That's how new stars form. This one formed new stars too, and one of them was a little bit isolated from the others. It collected material around it and turned it into something we call a protoplanetary disk. That's a disk of gas and dust that rotates and goes around the core of what will later become a solar system. That disk can develop into celestial bodies too, like asteroids and planets. But this disk formed the central star we know today as our Sun, eight planets, and the rest of the objects that make our solar system. It's about 4.6 billion years old. All stars come from this pretty cool thing called a pre-solar nebula. It's, once again, a cloud of dust and gas that pulls material in. Later, a star forms out of it, a big outer region that surrounds a nebula is cold. A pre-solar nebula creates a protostar. It's a young star that is still not on its own, but needs to gather mass from its parent cloud. 
then the star becomes independent. The material from the outer cold region then starts forming bigger clumps. As time goes by, these large clumps grow and fall in. They move around, interact with each other, and sometimes even merge or eject one another. After hundreds of thousands to even millions of years, once there's a star, the planets start forming. There were probably many objects that are gone by now, but our solar system doesn't look very different from what it was back when it was formed. Some things may have been different though. We have four gas giants now, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Maybe there might have been a fifth one too. It's possible our four gas giants were closer to the sun, but they migrated outwards. And what was between Venus and Mars? One theory says Theia, a smaller Mars-sized world that later, bam, collided with Earth and we got the moon. Checking the materials of these objects, scientists have found out many interesting things when they study all kinds of minerals, rocks, and solid bodies. The composition of different elements tells them about how old some object is. They have studied meteorites that have landed on our planet. They assumed these meteorites and the Earth are part of the same system, so they calculated their potential age and got around 4.54 billion years. Rocks from the Moon haven't gone through the same processes as Earth rocks, and they're younger by a couple of million years. And the Sun, the central star of our solar system, could be a bit older. Maybe tens of millions of years older than the oldest rocks. That's how formation in most cases goes, remember? Stars first, then planets and other solid objects next. So yes, it could be close to 4.6 billion years old. Jupiter's satellite Callisto is, as far as we know, the oldest moon both in our solar system and the universe. It's not that glamorous, just a rocky world with ice covering its surface and many craters. These craters tell us that many random flying objects have been hitting it over the past 4 billion years. That's how long we believe it's been around. Callisto and the rest of the moons around Jupiter have probably been born out of debris that was left after Jupiter formed. This all seems so old, but the universe is 13.7 billion years old. So imagine how many things out there are even older than our solar system. But now, scientists have confirmed that they have found one of the oldest but also most distant objects we've ever known in the universe. It's a galaxy 12.8 billion light years away from us. It started forming within the first billion years of the universe, which also means it was that long after the Big Bang started everything. During the first 400 million years after the Big Bang, it was most likely way too hot for anything to form. So first galaxies, black holes, and stars started forming maybe within the first half a billion to billion years. So this old galaxy could be one of the first things that ever appeared in the universe and we get to see it. It's hard to observe it though. Scientists use a telescope to explore it, but the picture's still very blurry. It's hard to see such objects because of all those thick, gigantic clouds of dust that surround them. The Hubble Space Telescope is usually best to view distant galaxies, but there's another telescope with a better position to look at such objects, and we can't wait for it to be fully operational to see what else it'll discover. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.